G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this video we're going to be doing my September 2020 fish room update tour. So why don't we get straight into the video. So the first tank getting an update in this month's video is my Judochromus Regani tank. You can see the amount of fry they've got in this tank. They're approaching uh, two to three centimeters now and there's about 20 of this size in this tank with my uh, breeding pair. I've actually got another breeding pair of Regani in the four foot tank below these guys and their fry are doing quite well as well and they're in a community tank. The parents have managed to keep those fry alive and their fry are a little bit larger than the fry that you see here. So the parents in the other tank have done quite well. I actually believe that the pair that are in this tank have spawned again. They've kicked all the fry out to the front of the tank and they have been behaving in a way that makes me believe they have spawned again. Now you may notice that there is one large fry that is with the breeding pair that pokes its head in and around those caves. That is one of their first babies. They've accepted it and they allow it to stay near their spawns. I think it's quite unusual because they've kicked out all the other fry. Their past generations have already sold them to an aquarium shop in Sydney. But I didn't want to sell that one baby because the parents have accepted it to be with their fry. So they're a little trio at the moment. I haven't seen the latest spawn yet, but I believe I'll see their fry in the next few days or so. Soon I'll be pulling these fry out and putting them into the four foot tank below the parents and hopefully I'll be able to sell them soon. Okay guys, so the next aquarium getting a bit of an update is my Alto Lampologus White Calvus tank. Well, these guys are my oldest fry. You can see them on camera, they're getting quite large now and they're starting to outgrow this tank, so I'm going to be moving them out of their tank. They're about three to four centimeters here, well the largest ones are. Uh, some of them are about two to three centimeters. They do grow at quite different rates and you have to be mindful of that with calvus fry and you need to separate them as they do grow at different rates and the bigger ones will prey on the smaller ones. So just something to bear in mind when, if you're raising calvus fry. Now this tank does look quite dirty. I've had to keep it this way because I didn't want to disturb them. If you've watched my past videos you will know I've had a bit of a problem with calvus dying suddenly just from shock and I'm not going to go through all this details here. If you want to you can see there, I'm just not even waving my hands around the camera and they're very skittish. I'm not going to go into the details about it in this video. If you want to know more about it, you can watch my detailed, in-depth species profile on how to breed Alto Lampologus calvus right here. And I explained the whole situation in that video and how I corrected that issue. But yeah, this is how the fry look right now. They're growing really well. They were born in early March and it is now early September 2020. So they are slow growers, but they're getting there and I'm hoping to sell some at my next local auction, which hopefully will be next weekend. We'll see how they do. But yeah, I will be moving them out of this tank shortly. I'm not sure what tank I'm gonna be putting them in yet, but they need to go into a larger grow out tank. They've really outgrown this tank. This tank is one foot wide by two foot long by just over one foot high, it's about one and a half foot high, but there are a lot of calvus in this tank and they need more growing space. So that's what I'll be doing in the coming days. So the next set of tanks that are getting a bit of an update are my breeding bristlenose catfish tanks. Some of you guys have been on my channel for a while now will recognize this tank as my adult breeding pair of albino bristlenose. They are a fantastic breeding pair for me and have been doing quite well. You can see in the tank there are multiple generations of baby bristlenose catfish fry. However, over the past few months, the male has started to develop uh, weird behavior with his breeding habits. And I think he may be kicking his clutches out of his cave. I'm not 100% sure. So the last few times they've spawned for me, I've noticed the clutch of eggs just sitting in the tank. I've had to pull those eggs out and try the raisin myself. The other thing I'm suspecting that could be happening, and I'm hoping this is the case, is that the male has actually been spawning with the female in her caves, which is where you see the driftwood on the right here. So that is a possibility as well. He might be spawning with the female at her caves and then the eggs are just being flung around the tank and I need to raise them myself. However, there might be the possibility he's starting to develop a behavior where he is kicking the eggs out of his cave. However, they do have a clutch of eggs 
and I've managed to save a clutch of eggs. It's the first time I've managed to save Bristlenose eggs and raise them myself. I have bought two breeding house boxes, that's what they're called, breeding house XL extra large breeding boxes. They're 2.5 litre breeding boxes that hang on the side of the aquarium. Now you might be able to see in the top left of the screen a sponge filter that's really close to the front of the glass. And that's actually the pre-filter that you can buy as an additional add-on to these breeding houses. It doesn't filter out all particulates and especially with bristlenose catfish they are very messy eaters and they poop a lot. So some debris do come into the breeding house but it is a really good product and I do recommend it for you guys because I have finally been able to raise bristlenose fry. Can't believe it, they were failing before but this time they are working. Now it isn't 100% like I have had some eggs fungicized but that's because they, those eggs potentially weren't fertile. And I have had some fry die in the breeder box. They've hatched and they have uh, unfortunately died. But the majority of fry have survived and you can see them here they're doing quite well and they are absorbing their yolk sac and growing so i'm very confident that they're going to survive once i put all once they have developed their yolk sac completely i'm going to introduce them into the aquarium and i'll be able to take this this breeder box off the aquarium okay so in this tank i've got a trio of normal colored short fin bristlenose they are a breeding trio and they are one male and two females in this tank. And you can see the amount of fry that they have had. Now, like I said, they are normal colored, the black variety of bristlenose, the short fin variety. Now you might notice on the screen though, that they are albino fry in this tank. And the interesting thing with these bristlenose is that they have the albino gene pretty strong in the adults even though the adults are all the black normal colored bristlenose. I'm sure some of you guys um, who are more experienced in the hobby will know that this occurs sometimes with uh, some strains of bristlenose but I'm sure there are some people out there that might find that information new so hopefully uh, you've learned something out of this. However, I've got something more interesting to show you with the next tank. Okay, so the interesting thing with this tank, obviously it's another tank where I'm breeding bristlenose catfish. However, all the parents in this tank are long fin normal colored bristlenose. But as you can see again, they're pumping out albino bristlenose. But if you look closely, there are actually four types of bristlenose in this aquarium. There are your normal colored long fin bristlenose, your albino long fin bristlenose. However, the long fin parents are also pumping out short fin fry. They're pumping out short fin albinos as well as short fin normal colored black bristlenose. So they're producing four different types of bristlenose in the one aquarium. A lot of you guys would expect this to happen in the hobby these days. However, I'm sure there are a lot of you watching this video who hopefully have learnt something through this because uh, I'm sure there are some people that don't know that bristlenose catfish could do this with, uh, the, the, with the genetics that are out there. So in my situation, I know the breeder I got pairs off and it was my cousin Adam. <laughs> he gave me some bristlenose when they were about maybe five to six centimeters long, they weren't too big. And he gave me a combination of long fin normal colored bristlenose and short fin normal colored bristlenose. He didn't give me any albinos. However, I knew the pair that he had that produced the babies he gave me were pushing out albino fry and long finned albino fry. So I had a feeling this was gonna happen with mine. However, the short fin adults have not produced any long fin fry. They've produced albino and normal colored bristlenose, but no long fin varieties. But the long fin varieties have produced both long fin and short fin. So I'm not sure what's happening there with the genetics, and I thought it'd be interesting to share that with you guys. So the next tank getting a bit of an update is my Ventralis Tritica fry tank. These are the four fry that survived from the first spawn of my female and they're growing quite well. They're just over an inch now and they are just over about a month old. They are very very fast growers compared to the Alto Lampologus calvus. These guys really do grow up very very fast and you can see they're quite fast swimmers as well. Midwater fish and they're just silver at the moment but the males turn a beautiful iridescent blue the other good news is the female is holding again and I need to catch her out of the four foot aquarium and put her in here so she can 
raise her fry in peace and quiet without harassment from the three males that she's currently with. So I'll be doing that in the next few days. But yeah, these guys are going quite well and I'm very happy about that. But um, I did have six in here and I left the female in here maybe a little bit too long and she ate two of her fry. So <laughs> lesson learned, I won't leave her in here with the fry next time. So there you have it guys, my September 2020 fish room update tour. I really hope you enjoyed that video and found it informative. If you did, please hit the like, comment and subscribe buttons. I really appreciate it. Alright, I'm going to wrap this video up now. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.